everybody and welcome to Uprise and today I want to share with you guys what I look for when choosing a hydrogen machine. Things get really complicated when it comes to this and so I'm going to try to give you guys just kind of a crash course on this and you guys can then utilize this information and ultimately make up your own mind. Now the reason I'm making this video is because I've had so many people emailing me asking me my opinion on so many different hydrogen machines and I really hope that this is going to help you again make up your own mind. I definitely recommend grabbing a pen and paper because I got a list here. There's a lot of stuff on the list. It gets really complex so let's get started. The first thing you want to look for is how much hydrogen does this machine actually make? You want to look at the proper level within the water that it's making. The magic number that I look for for the ultimate results is 1.0 ppm to 1.6 ppm. If it's lower than that or if they don't tell you the number, I just don't trust that. I, I won't even keep looking beyond that. If it goes higher than 1.6 ppm, for me, that's something that makes me suspicious about how the water is actually being made. So I just stay away from it too. So that's actually the magic number 1.0 ppm to 1.6 ppm. If you see ppb, try not to get too confused. It basically means parts per billion versus parts per million. I like the PPM, parts per million, because PPB, this is all getting really confusing, is kind of a way to try to inflate your number. So I kind of try not to look for that too much. All right, the next thing on the list. All right, the next thing you want to really look for is how long does the hydrogen stay within the water that you're actually making? Believe it or not, this is something that's really important to you because it's actually telling you how the water is being made and whether it's really being done the best way or not the best way, ultimately for your health. So that's the information you really want to look for. If they don't give you that information, again, I just kind of skip it and I don't look beyond that. All right, next one. Um, the next thing you really want to look for is when, the way that the water is being made, a lot of these machines make the water instantly. And then they make it sound like that's a really great thing. Like, oh yeah, you get your water instantly the moment you want it. And the funny thing is, is that when you make water that comes out instantly, as far as hydrogen water is concerned, it's actually giving you a clue as to how the water is being made. I've never seen one machine that makes instant hydrogen water be any good. So the moment I see that, I stay away from it too. So that's something that I look for. All right, the next thing. Where is the machine made? You really want to ask this question. First of all, if any machine is made in China, in my opinion, from all the data I've seen from machines that make the water or even just the gas that you breathe, it's all really bad. I stay away from everything that is made in China in regards to the hydrogen field. I haven't seen anything good. So that's the first thing. What you really want to look for is a machine that is made in Japan. Japan has the highest standard. They really try to do the job right. It's just the way that they do things. And Korea is second on the list, but they're really not up to the standard of the Japanese. So I just look for stuff that's made in Japan. I know that in the past, I've seen machines from Korea, they've been great. They're just not to the standard these days that I'm seeing that the Japanese do. Because when you look at stuff like from China, you don't want that inferior metal quality or they don't want to put the money into it. You know that old adage where it says you get what you pay for? In this regard, it's something really important to look at. And I don't want inferior metal uh, technology or quality in these Chinese products that's gonna leach into my water and possibly cause effects to my health when you're trying to do something that ultimately gives you a benefit. So that's my opinion, take it for what it's worth. And we'll go to the next thing. All right, the next thing is, I personally, when I'm choosing a machine these days, when I'm reading all the, all the information about breathing in hydrogen gas versus drinking the hydrogen water, this is the interesting thing. The science is showing that drinking the hydrogen water has certain benefits that even the hydrogen gas doesn't have. But the hydrogen gas also gives you certain benefits that drinking hydrogen water doesn't give you. So if you want to cover all your bases, I would look for something that has a combination of both. And if you're not going to do that, then you're probably going to be shopping around for one machine that only allows you to really breathe in the hydrogen gas and then another machine that ultimately makes the water. That gets kind of difficult, so I would look for something that can do both. Again, just my opinion. All right, the next one is I don't want water that's been electrolyzed. So I look for water that has not been electrolyzed or a machine that does not electrolyze your water. So that's something that I look for. 
I also don't want anything causing any type of chemical reaction. So there's like these hydrogen sticks people email me about all the time that are made in China. Oh no, I totally stay away from those because again, that's another chemical reaction and the stuff in those hydrogen sticks I stay away from. Hydrogen pills, kind of the same thing. I don't want to be taking these hydrogen pills on a regular basis. Though I will say, I'll actually take some hydrogen pills if I catch a flight or something. I'm on a plane, I know I'm being exposed to more radiation up you know, in the higher atmosphere. And so, yeah, I'll take some hydrogen pills for something like that, but that's it. It's not something that I'm going to be taking on a regular basis and exposing myself to that on a regular basis. The science in Japan that I've read, it just doesn't look good. So that's kind of my take on it. All right, the next thing, this whole SPE and PEM technology. This is really important because it's not all created equal. So you see PEM technology, it's like looking at one of these HDTVs, they're all claiming to be HD, but you can see for yourself when you're seeing all the different televisions that they look different. It's the same thing with the whole SPE and PEM technology. What I would recommend is make sure that if it does have PEM technology, that it's dual chamber. This is super important. If it doesn't have dual chamber, it's not of the same standard. And even beyond that, just because it says P, you know, SPE and PEM technology, it doesn't mean that it's all good, but it is a good thing too in the end. So it's something that I look for. It's got to have that at least, no matter what the quality of it is. So that's something that I look for also. The other thing I look for when choosing a hydrogen machine is a machine that allows me to utilize any kind of water that I want to use. I certainly don't want to pick a machine that doesn't let me use the water I want to use. If it only uses the tap water and it has to go through the filters that are supplied by whatever the company or machine is, it's not what I want because then I got to rely on their filters to filter out and, and create the quality that I ultimately want. I'm a huge fan of, I mean, of clean water, <laughs> let's put it that way. But I really like distilled water. Now I do mineralize my distilled water, usually, not all the time, but usually, and people are always emailing me asking the question, well, how do you mineralize it? This is what I use. They're called concentrates minerals. I like them because, I'll put a link below for those of you who might wanna get some of these because I get that question so often. It eliminates the majority of the salt. It has almost every mineral that you would want, but I also make my own. I make something called Sole. It's spelled S-O-L-E. If you've never heard of it, Google it, YouTube it, and you'll be able to see how to make it. That's another way that I choose to mineralize my water. I just like distilled water because it's the cleanest water I can get, and I think that the cleanliness of the water is very important. And then of course the amount of hydrogen and the way it's properly made is also really important. And the minerals are also important too, but I get a lot of those from food too. So that's my take on it. All right, the next thing. All right, I definitely want to look for something that I can travel with or at least move around the house because when you get a countertop uh, type of machine that you have to like do all this plumbing and hook it all up, it's really, really difficult. I don't like doing all that, especially if I'm going to take it with me somewhere. So I like something that I can, that's easy, that I can just kind of take with me and travel. Sometimes I even go to a friend's house who's sick or I want to help out or I just want to share my machine and show it to them. So that's something that I look for also. All right. The next thing is, is the size and the weight of the machine. Some of these machines I've seen, they're so big and they're so heavy and they're even so complex. And I, I personally don't want anything like that. I want something really kind of compact if it's possible and so that I can, again, carry it with me because sometimes I'll go on vacation for like a month or two somewhere, even if it's for a couple of weeks, it just depends on the person. If it's if you wanna go without your hydrogen water, I don't wanna go out without my hydrogen water. So I want something that I can travel with or even I can move around the house or even if you ever move just to a different home. It's just something that's you know positive for me. So that's something that I look for. All right, now I go back to the part I was talking about how easy it is to use a machine. Some of these machines are so complex, I don't want to have to be a scientist or have a PhD to figure out how to use one of these machines. I want something that's really simple, really easy, preferably one button, that's it, show me how to use it, maybe two buttons, but that's about it. I don't want anything really complica you know, complicated to make the hydrogen water or the hydrogen gas that I'm going to be using. So that's something I look for also. And the very last thing I look for is the warranty. I'm really surprised that when I'm shopping around for some of these products, some of them don't even offer a warranty. I think it's crazy. Or maybe even just a 90-day warranty. That's not something that you're really standing behind, is it? 
I would look for something that has at least like a one year warranty. All right, that would be great. And that's just something that I look for, you know, for because I think it's important. And beyond that, I really hope this information helped you guys. I know it was a crash course. It was really difficult. And there's probably a lot of information. I hope you wrote it down. If not, rewind, watch again. Don't forget to share, subscribe, like, do all the internet stuff. Thanks for watching. Again, I really hope that you guys found it helpful. And I'll see you guys next time on my next video.